Yeah. 
Well, Paul Conker, we have to say welcome to LJ to all you tourists who are up here because <laughs> of the Apple Festival. We had to open with welcome to LJ because it is apple season. Are you an apple fan? Yes, I am. And do you eat an apple a day keeps the doctor away? Not a day, but I eat an apple a week. Do you remember Arthur Allred from down in Tate? He was the pharmacist for a hundred years. Yes. Doc, miss, Mr. I started to say doctor. Mr. Sweet Precious Arthur Allred had a refrigerator that he kept only apples in. And he would tell me every day, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So for you guys who have apple orchards, you need to have sent him some money because he <laughs> always promoted your apples. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. It is full of vitamins and nutrients, mm -hmm. and it is really good for you. And we are filled with apples this weekend. It's oh, yes, be we a are. Crazy, crazy time. L J is wide open for business. And speaking of business, this is all that's left. I bought a bag full of biscuits, but my crew, we might have devoured them. So I wanted to share that you can get a local made biscuit right here at the DQ, which has been one of our sponsors for a long, long time. It's that tenderloin. And this is, it's bacon. Would you eat it? Oh, bacon? I'm not going to right now, but absolutely. <laughs> good, 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 good. This is so yummy and so good, and this is local. And don't forget our local businesses during the Apple Festival. <laughs> well, try to shop locally. Try to go out to town. We are going to be hanging out across from Ace Hardware. I'm going to have Dwight's T-shirts, the Mr. L.J. shirts. We're going to have all of his CDs available. We're going to have just kind of a meet and greet and get to know each other, having fun. I've got some antique quilts that I'm actually going to have there. And we are just going to have a good, good, positive vibe weekend with getting to know Ella J. And the best way you can get to know Ella J is listen to the song, Welcome to Ella J. Written by that local, I call him a boy. He ain't no boy. <laughs> He's an old man. No, I can't believe I said that. He'll kill me. <laughs> <laughs> but it is so funny. He wrote that song many, many years ago. And then it was just produced a few years ago. So it's really strange to me because once it gets in your head, it really gets in your head. And we just want to say welcome to LJ, everybody who is here visiting, everybody who watches this on YouTube. And I love, we have some great folks on YouTube who are sending positive messages and really cool stuff. And, and that's what it's about. Now this week we honored, and you see this shirt, it says Loretta Lynn. This is probably my favorite. I saved my favorite for the last day of the week because Loretta Lynn passed away. She went to be with the Lord this week. And there's never been a time in my life that I wasn't listening to Loretta Lynn's music. There's never been a time in my life that I would forget the words to her songs. There's never been a time in my life that I didn't feel like she set the tone for a lot of my life. You know, when I was an angry woman about to choke out Angela's daddy, I'd play don't come home and drink it. <laughs> and when I was mad enough to choke out that woman that was involved, I'd play, you ain't woman enough. <laughs> and when I was really angry, back in the olden days, I would play Fist City. So Loretta Lynn kind of set the tone for my life. You released a lot of energy through oh that song. Oh my gosh, you? Loretta Lynn and I had a lot of them late <laughs> night talks. Do what? Oh, is your mic pack up here on the table? Okay, put it up there. No. Some weird... Y'all can't hear me. Oh, yeah. I don't know what's up. There you go. It looks like it's better. There you go. Just sit it right here. For some weird reason, just lay it down there. Okay. okay. All right, that's, techni that's technical. You know when we're live? <laughs> we are live. We are really live out here. And I told Roger Futch years ago, what you see is what you get. That you is either true. get the perky, bubbly, crazy me, or you get the sad, depressed uh, me. And lately, you've been getting a lot of perk because things are going good. Things are going good. Real estate is kind of leveling to a point that we're not as crazy as mm -hmm. we were. And people are judging and thinking and really looking mm -hmm. at the whole picture. And people who have a little bit of retirement going on, 
we're going to talk about that in a little bit because if you're planning your life estate for the end of your life and you live to be 106, you better plan well, huh? Yes, you better plan you well. You better plan well. Especially and, with the, with the government policies that are oh, that are in God, place. You're going to need to started. you're going to need to you're going to need to have some margin for error. And and speaking of Loretta Lynn leaving <clears throat> her legacy to her children, her twin daughters are amazing entertainers and her daughter Sissy love 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 Sissy so much and Ernest Ray, these kids will now have to create their own legacy because their mom is gone and she's, since her stroke, she hasn't been performing. So these kids stepped up to the plate and they have done, I think, what their father would be proud of and what their mother also would be proud of. And that's what children do. They step up to the plate and they do what your parents would want you to do. Now, I've been dealing lately with a family and <clears throat> you're, I can't tell you who yet and I can't tell you where yet but I will be doing that in the near future. These, these parents were absolutely precious, precious people. She sadly went to be with the Lord a few years ago and he is left behind to be in assisted living. And um, if you're gonna be in assisted living, you better have some cash <clears throat> because it's, you know, it costs you money to exist there. And they're trying to plan the end of his life now. And so we're going to do an estate sale. And we've been working, working, working. And we're going to show you some photos now. There is some of the coolest stuff in this place. And there are some old, old horns that look to me like they came off of a tractor and trailer. <laughs> and then there's this really cool car that kind of reminds me of a soapbox derby car, but it's not... It's really, really cool. We have some cool, cool stuff we're gonna be selling. So for you men sitting out there watching today, y'all pay attention. The women always pay attention. And, and yesterday, I did find some more coffee cups that go to the set of the Corral that we're gonna be selling. Now this is, do you have your children's first tricycle? No, my kids, ne ne well, we gave it to our well, Our this nephew. family has their old high chairs, their old tricycles, but wait till you see this little <laughs> green machine thing. And honestly, it is it is truly a collector's item, and it is really, really cool. And that's kind of the thing we're running into with this estate. We're finding some really cool stuff. Some stuff from the 30s, some stuff from the 40s. That is the little thing that I cannot figure out how. But it does this. It goes back and forth to drive it. You move it. You don't pedal it. You move it with your arms. And it's really, really cool. And it's all metal. And it's older than dirt, y'all. It's older than I am. So, and look at that old hair dryer. And, and that is, now that is like a piece of technology from way back when. <laughs> there are just so many weird, weird things in this estate that are just, they kept everything. There's a really, really cool photograph, phonograph, and a radio, Zenith, in super, super good condition, and it's all I can do to keep from buying that thing. I don't need nothing else to haul in. <laughs> so I just keep hoping that one of y'all is just gonna step up to the plate and say, oh, we can't wait taters. to have this, taters. But everything they ever had was still on this property. Now that's an old 1950s sewing machine that still works. That's wow. Volkswagen parts. We have Volkswagen seats, Volkswagen parts, Volkswagen bumper, Volkswagen um, hubcaps. Load ramp behind yeah, it. Yeah, we have all kinds of cool stuff. <clears throat> so if you're a Volkswagen guy, you might want to show up. That's an old uh, Volkswagen tire wheel. Yep. No Volkswagen? No, there might be one out in the woods. What I'm a checking. That? I'm a checking. That's a... But that's the Zenith old phonograph. Is wow. that not the coolest thing? And and look at the, the other side of it. Even the speaker part is perfect. Look at that. That's the wow. fabric where the speaker comes through. And it's absolutely perfection. It is so cool. And Zenith, probably made in the early 50s, probably, <laughs> hate to say it, made about the time I was made. That's a pulpit. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. And this family actually started a church service on this property many, many, many years hmm. ago. And uh, we've just got some really, really cool stuff. And I haven't I seen one of those rocking chairs in a long time. One. Okay, see those old horns out yeah. there? <laughs> that, to me, is the coolest thing on the property. I have no idea what they go on, but there are some old headlights that go on old, old cars, probably from the 30s. 
Look at those. Now, what, what, Paul, what do they go on? Is that not the coolest thing? It's a good question. I don't know, but I know some man sitting out there today is watching and he's saying, well, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's we'll true. see, we'll see. There's their little high chair and, you know, you just think about it. There's a set of hubcaps now. I'm surprised that I didn't want those Chevrolet hubcaps for something because I just like old hubcaps. I think they're really cool. And that is a, a, a little seat that came off of some kind of old antique buggy. So it's just really cool. And if y'all are into bacon cakes, <laughs> I understand the granny was really into bacon cakes. And That's a Superman. Every kind of cake pan you can imagine. Superman cake mm -hmm. pan. We have all the things to do wedding cakes. We have all the things to do candy molds. We have it all. So if you are a baker extraordinaire and we have I bet she had 20 of the, um, what do you call it, pressure cookers. But I'm finding the bottoms of them and can't find the tops of a lot of them. Mm. Then I found two original, big, huge, old, old pressure cookers that have everything intact. So it's just been an amazing journey. Now this, this is the coolest thing ever. This is part of, Dad was going to build an, uh, a replica of a Model T for the youngest son. And this is the driving gear and everything that goes with that. And it would have been absolutely the coolest thing ever because he was, that's what he did. He, he was very machine-like. I'll just say that. He was very, very smart. That's the back of the pulpit. So um, it is, this has been a fun time to go through these people's things and to just enjoy them because I knew them and loved them dearly. And look at that old twin bed that still has the original decal on it. And then we have tools, because men like tools, and men like stuff. And that is, do you call that thing a broad axe? Is that what you call that? That big long handle that you, on the far, far left? You know, I'm not sure what you call that, but I, I, so. I use them a lot, actually. And that's a heck of a sledgehammer. If you know somebody that's breaking in your house, I might, instead of grabbing a gun, you could grab that sledgehammer and you could knock their lights out. So, And that is a really cool old swing that's heavy, heavy, heavy. And then a, a Dutch doll quilt top. It's the quilt top, so you would have to quilt it. That would give you ladies that are bored to death something to do this winter. And Paul, do you know what that is? That's a seed planter. That is. That is. And heavy, 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 heavy. Well, so, I'd like to have that. Actually. Well, it's for sale. It's for sale. Assuming it still so, works. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay, we're back. All right, y'all. This week has been really, really tough for the fans of Loretta Lynn, and I think we have something queued up now we can use from one of the guys who worked for her for 30-something years. We're going to do just a couple of minutes of it. It's just a couple of minutes of it, and, and we're going to share because if you worked for somebody for 35 years and your life is kind of set, and then all of a sudden she had a stroke and then they came off the road, and what do you do with your life? Mm -hmm. And if if your boss passes away immediately, what do you do with your life? And so I don't know where we had a, an interview with Lee Hilliard and an interview with Bart Hansen, both of them just wonderful, wonderful guys who worked for Loretta for many, many, many years. And now they're gonna be in a totally new arena because the boss is gone. And I think everybody always assumed after the stroke that she would get to come back and be herself again didn't happen um, and so that's tough How old that's was tough she? for her fans she was 90 she was 90 and you know the coolest thing about her life she lived it to the fullest uh oh she lived it to the fullest but at the end she went peacefully in her sleep so is that pretty cool that's a blessing from the Lord right is there. that pretty cool that is pretty cool so so we're gonna t we're gonna go ahead and and take a commercial break and come back and visit with Paul for a little bit and then we will do the interview on Loretta toward the end of the program so we'll be back in just a few minutes Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meat, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? 
United Country Talking Rock Realty says, Welcome to North Georgia. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Take the back roads and really get to know North Georgia. Combine the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000 or go online to georgiamtc.com. High-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. showed you a bunch of photos of an estate that we're going to be helping to settle for a family and I can tell you any and everything they ever had they still have in multiples and you do estate planning that's something we, we rarely talk about but you know what people are living longer yes and in order to live longer you better plan better Yes. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, there's there's the financial aspect of that, but there's also the aspect of leaving, dying gracefully mm -hmm. and not leaving your family in a mess. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple things that I have seen over the years. Good planning and honest planning with the family can help keep a family together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because, you know, let's... Nothing destroys a family quite like money. Well, nothing destroys a family quite like money, but quite frankly, in my experience and what I've seen of the people who've gone through this, it's not necessarily about the money. So let's, you know, every family has issues. There's no perfect family. Um, really? Yeah, surprisingly <laughs> so. Funny, yeah. But, you know, what I have seen over the years is you have a situation where there's some strife with the kids. Let's say there's maybe one kid that, that had to be bailed out more than others. Mm -hmm. Um, or that doesn't step up to the plate as much as others. Or that doesn't step up to the plate as much as others. And, you know, mom and dad are, are, are secretive about the estate, and all of a sudden, you know, here you have a death. Mm -hmm. And one child is written out of the will, maybe for a good reason. Mm -hmm. Maybe just because mm -hmm. the parents are jerks, but, mm -hmm. but maybe for a good reason. Maybe because they gave them, <laughs> gave and gave right. and gave and gave and gave and gave well, and got a lot, given. Yeah, yeah. But, the, but the parents didn't necessarily have the courage to have the conversation mm -hmm. with that child. So guess <laughs> what? The child already feels bad about being who they are. Mm -hmm. Their parents mm -hmm. have just passed. Now there's no chance to, to resolve all, right. of those, all of those bitter feelings and guilt and shame mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. of that. So who's left to take all of that energy and turn it towards? They tend to turn it towards their spouses, their siblings, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they're fighting over money. Right. So I'm a big believer that you have serious communication and have the courage to have communication mm -hmm. with your family when you're doing uh, planning. But with that being said, there are a couple of core components that are incredibly important to developing, you know, passing gracefully. And if done right, it can limit the ability for 
for that grief to turn into stress between the siblings mm -hmm. and family members. Mm -hmm. First, get a will. Mm -hmm. You got a will? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot. You got a will? <laughs> oh, yeah. Didn't right. have one, do now. Okay. Yep, sure do. So the first thing you need to do is get a will. Now, we're very fortunate in Georgia because if you die without a will, it's not that complicated. It's going to take a little bit of time to go through. But, but it's important to have that will and have in writing what you want to have accomplished. Mm -hmm. And remember, you can update that will from time to time. Some people go so far as to pick out every single special thing that they have and try to, you know, give it to certain child. I did that. I hand wrote everything that I wanted to go everywhere. And see, I was so tired. When you take the so time tired. to do that, that's a pretty important thing. And I it's did. special because you've taken the time to actually do it. I did. And, and it's hard, you know, for somebody to say, well, mama promised me that. And, and well, if you put it into writing, you know who got it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the dying, quite frankly, is the easy part, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Yep. I mean, worst yep. case scenario. They've you, gone to be with the Lord and you are sitting here going, oh, mama, why did you leave me right. in this mess? Yep. yep. So here's the thing I'll tell you, and, I, and, and this is a harsh statement, but it is a, in our society today, we really don't like to have harsh statements. Everybody wants to. What a bunch of. Everybody wants to, you know, tell yeah. me what I want to hear. But here's yeah. the thing I'm going to tell yeah. you. If you really love your family, you will take the time and embrace the courage to go get a will put together and lay out your wishes. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you're going to leave a mess behind and that's mm -hmm. just not right. Now, mm -hmm. if, if somebody dies at the age of, you know, young and 29, yeah, at you 29 years it, old, yeah. there's not that many people under the age of 20, you know, that don't have kids. If you have kids, then you need a will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so in addition to that, there are more things that you need. Okay, so you need to have several things in place while you're living, and this talks about the assisted living. Mm -hmm. You need a financial power of attorney, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you need a health care power of attorney. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, that's a big deal in today's and society. And those are questions that are asked every time you go to any of those places. Who has this in place? Yes. Yeah. You need, uh, and you need a living will. Mm -hmm. So let me give you a situation. Let's talk about a health care power of attorney. So. Now, this was years ago, um, and I've got, I've, I'm trying to think, I've got to make sure that I formulate the story, because I didn't know we're, we don't ever plan what we're talking Never. about. Never. Fly by the seat of our pants. So i got to, <laughs> I've got to formulate the story so I don't give up any details to who it was, but the, the wife had experience in the medical field, the husband had experience in the medical field. Um, I do my normal thing, we go through, hey, get, have you got your wills done, health care power of attorney, financial power of attorney. We had a local attorney, there's several really good uh, local attorneys that they had already used, put that together. So he has a health event, ends up at Piedmont and Jasper. Mm -hmm. She walks in with the health care power of attorney. Mm -hmm. That speeds up the process to make decisions. He ends up, because of the health event, being life flighted to Piedmont and Atlanta. They get to Piedmont and Atlanta, she's in the car on the way following through. The doctor calls and says, look, I am not the specialist for what your husband needs. And I think it was St. Joe's in Gainesville. I've lost some mm. of the details in the mm -hmm. story. I am transferring him to St. Joe's in Gainesville. That's the only person that can treat your husband if, based on what I think this mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. So she turns and starts driving to Gainesville. They life flight him over to Gainesville, get there. She walks in the door. And Piedmont had apparently gone ahead and forwarded over the health care power of attorney that she had because it would got, it's not just Piedmont's health care power of attorney, it was Everywhere. a power of attorney, right? Yeah. Walks in the door, she had to sign a piece of paper too, and he said, look, we've got about 10 minutes to make a decision. I can't make this decision. So she was able to make the decision and he lived for another, I can't remember however, how long he lived after that, another seven or eight years. So the point being is, Life-saving. They did not believe because if you have to go through the paperwork without that health care power of attorney, they wouldn't have been able to make the decisions yeah. for him to live. Not in 10 hours, much less 10 minutes. Yes. Yeah. So here's something important that, that I have learned from clients and the attorneys. When you get that health care power of attorney, make copies of it and keep it in the glove box of your car. Mm -hmm. There's nothing on there that's financially devastating if somebody gets it. But mm -hmm. what are you going to do if you have an event? You're going to mm -hmm. get in the car and go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So a will, you got to get that. That's just basically telling your family that I love you and I care about you. Mm -hmm. um, a I love you, brother, more. Yeah. <laughs> no. 
I'm kidding, I'm kidding y'all. Financial kidding power of attorney. Now yeah. here's the thing that I tell people. Don't pick a child just because they're the oldest. Don't mm -hmm. pick a child yes. just because they're no. the youngest. Don't no. pick a child just because you, they're your favorite. Because here's what I'm going to tell you about your kids. Okay, because I have seen this. Your kids are going to do things that you don't believe that they do and not necessarily every child is trustworthy enough to have that financial power of attorney. So you have to ask the Lord for wisdom in who you name. Mm -hmm. but and it doesn't have to be a child. It you doesn't have to be a child. You a family, a, a, a close friend who would follow through on your best judgment. Right. So I, yeah. I've had a couple of clients that do not have children or they do not have children that, that they feel are capable mm -hmm. of making mm -hmm. the decisions. Mm -hmm. When you pick the child of financial power of attorney, they have to be impeccable in their trust. And I also recommend that you have a financial reporting requirement that you give to other siblings mm -hmm. or to other heirs of your estate. And all that is is a check and balance to help make sure that honest dealings are done. Mm -hmm. The one thing I'll tell you in, in serving through businesses and the business world I've seen is people will steal money if you give them the ability to do it without checks and balances. Mm -hmm. The one check and balances that's in place is if you have a financial reporting to the siblings, they can't abuse their position and they can't steal money or it's high, they can, but it's mm -hmm. highly unlikely and more than likely they're going to be, be caught. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have a child, it can be a relative. If you don't have a relative you trust, it can be a friend. Mm -hmm. The further you get away from home, the more check and balances need to be in place. And if you don't have any of those, you can hire professionals that can make those decisions for you. There are people out there, it's going to cost you money, but there yeah. are people out there yeah, that can that do that. Yeah, that would certainly be a last choice, wouldn't it? Last choice. Yeah, yeah. The second thing you need to do is it needs to be at least two deep, preferably mm -hmm. three. Mm -hmm. because so make it die because your number one ch choice of financial power of attorney could die mm -hmm. uh, or be incapable. Uh, number two, it's highly unlikely that you're going to have two, but preferably you want to go three deep. In the world of COVID, it is, it is highly likely that you better go three deep. Yes. Yeah, because yes. we have seen families wiped out. Right. So yeah, it's, it's, it, we're in a different time, Paul. Yeah. yeah. So. So here's the thing, like financial power of attorney, uh, uh, health care power of attorney when it comes to my kids, for example, Katie's very detail oriented. Mm -hmm. You know, she'd be great at running the books and making the decisions, but but I don't necessarily want to give Katie the health care power of attorney because she's going to have a hard time pulling the plug. Sure, right? sure. <laughs> health care sure. power of attorney yeah. can't pull the plug. That's, that's a good thing. That's your living will. That your kid lives you. Like that's your living will. Keep you, yeah. But, I, you know, and Will's still in high school, so he's a little too young, but I'd lean towards Kel because Kel would be heartbroken, but he'd, he'd know, hey, this he is what, it. it'd be a little easier on him to make yeah. that decision. Yeah. So you got to look at your family, and that changes over time. Mm -hmm. And have your living will in place because it makes it easier on your family to make that decision if you're a vegetable to pull that plug because you've stated, yes, if mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. unresponsive yeah. or come yeah. back, Holly and I argue. Do not let me lay there and, and oh my gosh, no, please yeah. no. Holly Never. and I argue because I'm like, look, you know, I, I, I'm heartbroken for people to end up being quadriplegics, mm -hmm. but it, that's a terrifying thing for me. I'm like, look, if, I'm, if I don't ever have a chance walking again or something like that, do not resuscitate mm -hmm. me in any mm -hmm. manner whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I don't know that Holly would do that because if your mind's still there, I mean, that's just a fear, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so if you have in writing, it's easier on your family. You know, this is about making sure that the legacy that you leave is one of bringing your family together and, and, and the last thing that they remember you for is that you made it a little easier on mm -hmm. them. Because especially if you've got kids that are out of state, right? Yep. If your will is not in place or it's not done correctly or you don't have a will, they're going to have to come and deal with the local courts. Yes, Georgia is a lot easier than Illinois. Oh, yeah. I just went And Cherokee with, County is easier <clears throat> than Cobb County. Yeah, Cherokee is easier than Cobb. Yeah. And Gilmer is easier than Cherokee County. Yeah, and yeah, Pickens is yeah. easier than Cherokee yeah, County. Yeah. But it's still, but still you have to consider that. Look. Uh, if you have rental property, right, and you're later in life and you've got kids dispersed across the nation. Think about your tenants. Yeah, your tenants. Yeah, because I mean, they have to be protected too. They do. Yeah. So it's important and it's incredibly important. Will, financial power of attorney, health care power of attorney, and your living will. Mm -hmm. and, and if you have that in place, then you've done everything that you prudently can do to make sure that you're, you're taken care mm -hmm. of and that you're 
you know, family is knows what your wishes are. I want to ask you something because I've because I've helped some families probate wills and I've seen some things that happened that I was going what? Yeah. Um, if you are the executor, you have the right to follow the direction of the will and to do everything that the will allows you to do. It is your responsibility. Yes. So why? I, and this is a particular something that I, I'm watching happen is family members that are distant family members are stepping up and saying, well, we don't like that. Well, I'm sorry, you weren't made the administrator. Right. And these are distant family members. Right. And so they've made this person's life really, really tough. And I'm like, but you are the executor. Execute. Execute. That means that you can do this. And they've gone through everything. They've gone through the process, done everything. But then there'll be this one little whine and gripe and somebody who's going to get something that really and truly wouldn't deserve it anyway, but is going to get it because they're following to the letter of the law. But as an executor, can't you just execute that will and move through without having to? As an executor, it's your responsibility to follow the wishes of the will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and to do that in a prudent and expedient mm -hmm. and timely manner. Mm -hmm. Now, and, and you have to understand that the executor and the attorneys will go over this when you get in that. But the executor is compensated for their time. See, I, I've never seen anybody compensated for it. I've never known anyone who accepted money for being the executor. Well, a lot of times in family, they won't take yeah, uh, right. money, but the executor can These be... These are all families. The, exe yeah. the executor can be paid up to, uh, in the state of Georgia, I think the maximum is 9%. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. But then that's the value of the estate. Because I've never seen anybody take a penny. So, so. It, so, no, I have. Really? Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's I've, interesting. I've, I've seen... Yeah. I think that a lot of executors take it, but they don't disclose it. Okay. Quite frankly. I've never seen anybody take a penny. Yeah. So, but executors can take, let's say, for example, 3% coming in mm -hmm. and 3% going out. Wow. So it's possible on a million dollar estate, the executor to be paid $60,000. Goodness. That's also important. All the attorneys that I refer people to mm -hmm. for uh, their wills, I have them state the max compensation for the mm -hmm. executor in, in there. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. and, and, and you got to think, there's a lot of work that has to be done with that sure. that the others don't do, and there's yes. a lot of stress. Yes, and, and there is, and there you go again. It's just like if there are two, three, four siblings, and it comes down to two or three years of care for mom and dad, there's always one that can't do it as much. There's always one not willing to do it as much. When it comes down to even Stephen, it's never even Stephen. Right, you no, know, it's, it's never, never even Stephen. Stephen. Somebody, somebody always steps up to the plate and does 10 times more. But in the end, it's always divided equally because that's what mom and dad wanted. That's what auntie wanted. That's what uncle so-and-so said and you mm -hmm. believed him, although at the end of his life, he was really mean and angry to everybody. So there's so many times that, oh, you got it right. in writing and you got to do it, but you really wanted to choke him out, you right. know? Because sometimes people don't mean to get ornery toward the end of their life, but they do. But they do. Well, they do. I, yeah, men are horrible about getting ornery at the end of their yes, life. They I mean, they really <laughs> yes, so, they are. Yes, they are. But, you know, it, so here's an example, and these are conversations that I have had. So I have, I have some, someone that had named me as executor. And I said, okay, if you're going to name me executor, then, then this is the maximum fee that I think is reasonable to be charged and blah, blah, blah. So we wrote that out. And I said, okay, you've got these four children, mm -hmm. you've got this one major asset that's a home place, and this is how I'm going to proceed on how that can be. If the kids mm -hmm. want to keep it together, they can keep it together. Mm -hmm. That's easy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, if there's a child that wants to buy out the other three kids, then mm -hmm. an appraisal is going to be done on that property and whatever that market value of that will be is mm -hmm. what that number is going to right. be. And right, and that's, you have to do that to protect yourself as the executor. Well, it's not only as the executor, but to protect the heirs of the estate. Exactly, right? Because exactly, and that's what was done with this last one where the whining, complaining cousins coming out of the, and we're like, we got three appraisals, people, what more do you want? Right, you know? right. So, and three appraisals are reasonable, but, but the point being is, you, you know, you, you put that out there. Now, if it's going to be sold, 
to mm -hmm. the market, the market would justify what that appraisal is sure, going to be. You can sure. put appraisal if somebody comes in and pays and you more And appraisals are off 8%, 10%, 20% in today's market. But right, if so. it's going to stay in the family, and, and we had the conversation, and I actually just about stepped down as executor, and they said, well, if, if, the, you know, if this one sibling wants to buy it, then I think they should buy it for what I paid for it. Uh, no. And I said, no, that's, no, no, not, that's fair. not fair. To the other siblings. I said, that's not fair no. to the other siblings because no. what happens is you're instantly giving that one child Four hundred thousand more dollars than the other yeah, kids. Yeah, let's just yeah. pick that three hundred thousand because yeah. if they, if I was them, and that was the case, and I didn't even want to keep it, I'd take it and turn around and sell it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that mm -hmm. because that's not of integrity to your your siblings. Right, right. But that's what a shrewd person is going to do. Sure. So, I, so you get the appraisal. That's what that market value is. If that child can't buy that property at market value, then it goes to sell, and everybody gets what's equal right. because. You're, the way to if do you're, it. you're telling me you want to be equal for mm -hmm. these kids, but mm -hmm. you're making decisions that are not going to be equal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So an executor's responsibility is to follow through and to execute what the wishes of the person in that will are. It is not up to the executor to go, well, I don't think they were in their right mind. They need to make this decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they're not in their right mind, you tackle that before they pass away. Exactly. Once exactly. it goes and that now... I have in my will what's called a poison pill clause. Mm -hmm. Now, my kids are just getting things equally, but if I ever change that, then there's a poison pill clause that says if you challenge the estate, mm -hmm. challenge the will, then you mm -hmm. forfeit your right to the estate. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, I love that. Now, that's not going to, it's not going to, the, the point is, is if you challenge it, you forfeit it, but if you win and you can prove that there was absolute fraud, like, mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen situations of fraud where the where the person has Alzheimer's and one child gets in oh, there and I'm, I'm, one child. Listen, brother, I could write you a book so, right here in Gilmer County. I could write a 14 <laughs> chapter book. I'm telling happens. you. Oh, yes, sir. But oh, the point yes, is, sir. get your wills done, do your planning. And then get those copies out. Like mm -hmm. I have a lot of clients that will give me a copy of their will. They they put one in their safety deposit mm -hmm. box, mm -hmm. and they you know you can go record them at the courthouse mm -hmm. if you choose to, mm -hmm. and uh, you know and if you update it, communicate with everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unless you just want to be selfish and have everybody fighting after mm -hmm. your death. Yeah, and that's what it creates. And that's what you want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then communicate. Yeah. yeah. If you've got a kid that you're giving less, go talk to them. And Go say, talk to them and why. tell them why. Yeah. Have the courage to tell them why. Yeah. If it's yeah. the truth, mm -hmm. it's the truth. But then if you do that, then their anger is not going to be at their siblings because that's all right. they have left. Right. They're going to be standing at your casket going, I can't believe you did that to me. <laughs> but, yeah. it, but at least they had a chance to debate it with you while you were living. <coughs> right. And that is loving. That is loving your family. Mm -hmm. Anything else is selfishness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I've, and cowardness. I've seen so many crazy things, and lately I saw a sibling take advantage of a sibling. And it was supposed to be 50-50, and I probated the will for them. I controlled everything to the shots that I could control it. And then one allowed the other one to take advantage and really took thousands and thousands of dollars from one sibling. And I kept saying, you've got to stand up. Your mama is going to be very angry with you. When you get to heaven, your mama's going to smack your jaws because you allowed this to happen. But they didn't like controversy and they didn't like causing problems. And I'm like, there's no problem here if you just say, look, Bubba, you've been there. You owe me rent for all this mm -hmm. time. And they wouldn't do it. And, and that made me sad because the wishes of the parent were 50-50, mm -hmm. and it ended up being about 35-65 because one of them took advantage of the other one. That's well, sad. Well, and, and you know, and there are, there are always two sides to that. I mean, that there's, there is justice which needs to be followed, but sometimes is it, is it worth the battle and, just, and, and dragging the, commu the family? But yeah, here's what, what I've seen. I, I saw a situation like that where one person clearly took advantage of the other sibling I believe that God is just. Mm -hmm. Just because his consequences may be postponed mm -hmm. out of mercy does not mean that they're not coming. There okay? are consequences. So what yeah. I can tell you in dealing with She said the same thing. What I can tell you in dealing with money long term, there are blessings that God gives families that may not necessarily be monetary. Mm -hmm. I have never seen someone fraudulently steal from mm -hmm. a sibling or manipulate a sibling that it was not a cancer to their life financially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, 
the one who, if God was guiding them, chose to take the higher path was always rewarded. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It may have been five to ten mm -hmm, years, mm -hmm. and it may just be in... You know, there's a story about that in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing is, is there, there's a time to be just, <laughs> but there's also a time that is it really worth the destroying battle. the whole family yeah, on the yeah, battle. Yeah. Well, we, we're going to take a break for just a minute. I want to share this interview from Loretta Lynn, one of her crew members. And this is this is just a couple of minutes. And then we've got to talk Gilmer football. We've oh, got yeah. to talk Gilmer football. So we're going to do that Gilmer when football. we come back. So hang tight, guys. Here we go. The queen of country music, Miss Loretta Lynn. It's a big honor what it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a dream come true for me. It is. I really enjoy it. We have been to see her six times in about 15 months. Tonight was the best night. Is that right? Tonight was she incredible. She just gets better and better, doesn't she? She gets better and better. The first time I saw her, I was nine months pregnant with my 40-year-old child. So I just told wow. my age. I've been coming to see her for 40 years. As I host a television show every morning, I tell people, go see her. She is better than ever. Tonight, a lot of our viewers were here. And I think they were so excited. Many of them have never had the opportunity to see her. Right. So her being in Georgia was just incredible. Where was the first show, show that you saw her? In Atlanta. In, in Atlanta. Atlanta. And in Atlanta. I was nine months pregnant. And honey, a nine month pregnant woman does not want to hear you ain't woman enough. I believe it. That was in 1970. Oh, that? man, it was incredible. Now, let me ask you something. Sure. When you stand on stage and sing with her, the memories of she and Conway, y'all do a great job. It's not Conway, but it's an honor to be able to do that. It is amazing. Yeah. Now, how did you show up at her doorstep and get to stay there? Well, I actually didn't show up at her doorstep. I uh, I have my own band in Nashville, uh -huh. and I'd hired a guitar player to uh, to play for me that had just got this gig, and uh, he was only with it for a year. But uh, when he first started, he did some he had some fill-in gigs that uh, he asked me to do because he had some prior engagements, uh -huh. and uh, so I did five or six shows in 2002, and then the next year he wasn't with her any longer, so they asked me if I'd do it full time. So there you are. I fell on my lap. But, well, you really do. When you stand on stage, you bring your own presence. Have you ever thought about doing your own thing and yeah, leaving? Yeah, I moved to Nashville with, with that intent, but uh, really my dream has always been to just make my living in country music, and right. whether it be a singer, songwriter, or a musician, that's, that's what my goal is. And Let's talk about writing. Who's your favorite writer? Uh, probably Paul Overstreet. Okay. It's a big influence. And then Paul and Howard is a huge influence in my oh, life. Roger awesome. Miller uh, is a huge, I uh, mean, a lot of them. Chris Christopherson. The list is really long there, and Loretta is, is one of my favorite. Well, the singers are nothing without the words. That's true. The words, and, and the words, now my favorite Loretta Lynn song is, I'm the other woman. I love that She too. doesn't do that song <laughs> very often. Very I don't think she liked the other women. <laughs> my favorite is Fist City. Oh yeah, I love that <laughs> You can't, don't cut around with a kitty. It's just, <laughs> it's just awesome. classic writing, in my opinion. It is. Okay, yeah. the writing, the memories, um, 50 years. To see the people here tonight, a lot of the folks here struggle to pay for a ticket, but it was so important for them to be here. Um, I saw folks who really did. Um, this was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. They will leave here thinking about this forever. Every time, almost every time after the show, someone will come up and say, it was my my mother's 83rd mm -hmm. birthday present mm -hmm. or something like this, and she, it was her dream to see Loretta That's before. Right. And it's just amazing how a person how Loretta can touch lives oh, that yeah. she's never even met. Yeah. It's really amazing. Well, a lady sitting behind us is 76, and it was her first time to ever see her. She came because she's one of our friends. She just got a really bad medical diagnosis, mm -hmm. and she's waiting on some bad, bad results, but it was so important. She told the doctors, she said, you can do anything you want to me, but not November the 20th. I'm going to be with Loretta Lynn. It so, meant that much to yeah, her. And there crazy. were so many fans here like that tonight that it was very important to share her 50 years in country music. It's crazy. It's, uh, it's, it's a big honor for me to be able to share that 50 years as well. Here we go. Okay, it is time to talk Gilmer football. Yes, so... Gilmer Fri football bragging rights. Friday night is a big deal. Our, the Gilmer County High School program went through a horrible period uh, after Wesley Tankersley left. Mm -hmm. Some, some what I think were bad decisions in, in the administration we had at the time. But uh, so I think we set the longest losing streak in the state of Georgia. Yeah, 36 not, not games in a row. Not anyway, yeah. so we, we, had, we, we had a tough run at it, quite frankly. So Coach Paul Standard, who was at St. At Pius, came up, brought his team uh, last year. 
and uh, has really instituted what I believe to be an amazing culture. St. Pius was good school. St. Pius was great. Good school, good uh, yeah, school. Yeah, he was there for 20 years. Good school. And yeah. what's interesting, yeah. he had actually had been interviewed by Lex <coughs> Rainey uh, years and years ago about coming to Gilmer before wow. he went to St. Pius. Oh, how funny. But um, anyway, that was pretty pretty fascinating and, and he chose to, to go to St. Pius. But, so he's here, he's building a culture where these kids understand Kind of like what Nick Saban does at Alabama, that, mm -hmm. you know, you have a choice. Can I just say I love Nick Saban? Alabama, I'll not tell you so what, much. I love Nick Saban. I'm not an Alabama I fan. I love but, Nick Saban. But I, I love him. listening to Nick Saban's I quotes. I sent it to the family the other day I that says, him. you know, you can be, <laughs> you can be mediocre, you can be good, you can be excellent, or you can be elite. Mm -hmm. And the difference is if God gives you good talent, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. you can be good. Mm -hmm. But the only way that you're going to be great is to face the challenges in life and work hard every day. And this team is obviously doing that. They are. This team is obviously and doing And they're that. buying into the program. The coaches are smart. They're excellent. They're working hard. The community's getting behind them. So here we are coming into Friday's game. And speaking of community, let's give credit to businesses who are sponsoring and helping these ball teams. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. I, I wish, Queen being one I, wish I had the list, but you've got, you know, that's one thing that, that um, Sherry and I were talking about. Longhorn, yeah. Dairy Queen, Shane's, Pizza King, um, uh, Emily's, Charlie's. Uh, there's a whole host. I mean, yeah. we've had. Your uh, ball team is going to excel because local businesses step up to the plate absolutely. and give them a little help. And yeah. we, you yeah. know, I've, I've go out of my way to support those things because yeah. a lot of your big corporations just don't support your local community. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And that most of that profit's being taken out and gone, you know, goes to a corporate headquarters somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And local businesses are the lifeblood. Of, of what we have because quite frankly our budgets in the school systems just aren't enough to buy all the gear that needs mm -hmm. to be done. I mean it takes over a hundred thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. to run a high school football program and that's just feeding the boys on transportation, getting them to transportation, their their jerseys, their gear and the school does kick in some, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. but I mean it's it's it takes a lot to support these kids in camps and transportation to camps. I mean there's we don't waste money in that. Now, Delonica being five and one, and Gilmer being five and one, it's is the edge for Gilmer because it's homecoming and they want to show out. Is that? Well, it's at home, which gives us a little bit of an edge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We beat Wesleyan, mm -hmm. uh, thirty-five to twenty. Wesleyan mm -hmm. beat Lumpkin, twenty-eight to fourteen. Cool. Now, the interesting thing is, is and I don't know because I've not talked to coaches about this. This is just my observation as a dad who knows not much about football. I, I tried to coach one time, and, and I thought because I could play that I knew how to coach, and I'm a horrible football coach. <laughs> I'm a good water ski coach because I can coach kids one-on-one, -on -one, but the team thing, I'm, I'm not very good on, on offensive calls. That, yeah. that was humbling to me. I'm yeah. a little scarred by it, if yeah, you can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so... The thing is, is, is Lumpkins was very arrogant, confident, talking about how terrible Gilmer is. We're going to beat Wesleyan pretty Let's bad. Let's show them a thing or two. Uh, they go down and lose to Wesleyan. So did they come in arrogant? Maybe. So we got to be ready, mm -hmm. right? I mean, this is a big deal. So Will was telling me last night, this is North Georgia's game of the week. Lumpkin is 5-1. and one. Gilmer's 5-1. and one. Mm -hmm. Since Lumpkin lost to Wesleyan, right now, uh, Gilmer and Dawson are tied for first in the region. Is that not cool? Yeah, that's that is awesome. So cool. It's a yeah. big deal, and it's a big. Yeah. It's a testament to the kids that stayed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a testament to the kids that the to the coaches coming here and working through, and the kids buying into the program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what's interesting. So when our program was just horrible. I looked at Will and I said, hey, my office is in Pickens County. I've already looked. I said, I can move you to Pickens County if you want to. That would be an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For a Gilmer County boy saying that, that was a very hard thing to yeah, do. And yeah. I'm not a big, I'm not big that you just leave because you don't necessarily yeah. like the coat. The problem is I didn't believe in the character that we were teaching the kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just didn't think that there was enough support for the program to build the character we needed for the kids. So anyway. Mm -hmm. So I asked him and he said, Dad, he said, I want to stay here and be a part of the team that turns it around in Gilmer County. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So him and these other seniors that are out there, there's 13 seniors out there right now. Golly. That have you know, been through many coaches in yeah. their career. Yeah. 
and they've got a coach that believes in them. They've got a coaching staff that that works so hard. I mean, they're they're what they do with the talent that we have is absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. So guys, come out Friday. It's a big deal. I I, I so hope that Gilmer County can can take down Lumpkin County and win. Uh, it's going to mm -hmm. be battle royale, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, so Friday night we've been having packed houses. The energy in this community coming together to I support these kids is so it. fun to watch. And you know what? I love the color purple, so I'm so excited that we I got can two root for teams. Gilmer purple. Yes, I yeah. love it. I love it. I love it. Now Friday is Pink Out Night, mm -hmm. so because it's Where, breast because cancer awareness, breast cancer so awareness. to support. Yep. So I don't have many pink things, but I got to bring them out, yeah. and it is yeah. homecoming. Yeah. So yeah. you know, yeah. but but. Uh, this is serious. Okay, I mean, tell me the deal. game and the time, everything, give it everybody particular. Gilmer County team. High School kickoff is at 7.30. Mm -hmm. um, Friday uh, night. Friday night. Mm -hmm. Friday night under the lights. Under the lights. And you'll get to and come see our new. Homecoming, yep. You'll yep. get to come see our new uh, Jumbotron and the and we all, the advertisement for the sponsors that support the program and just everything that goes into it. We've yep. got a fantastic band for Gilmer County. Yep. We've got incredible cheerleaders the you know alumni if you're a Gilmer County alumni you get to, to if you pay to be a part of the the alumni group which goes to support the team then you get to stand on the sidelines awesome and I, awesome. I actually poor I like old Holly, poor old Holly she doesn't even see me during the games because I mean my son's on the field and I get to be down there yeah. as alumni so yeah. I'm on the sidelines the whole yeah. time cheering I, cool. I just can't yell at the refs when I'm that on the sidelines that is so cool. that's the only uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> I have to bite my mouth oh gosh okay because it is Apple Festival weekend we want to leave you now with more oh, yeah. of Gilmer County original music this is Southern City Lights and it is talking about your town Ella show up this Friday night at the Gilmer County Stadium and root for the Bobcats. They, number one, y'all, they are number one tied with Dawson County. That is a big to-do. Not that Dawson a, Lumpkin. Well, we're tied with tied Dawson. With Sorry, first. we are tied yeah, with Dawson. Tied with yeah. That's a big yeah. deal. That's that big is deal. a big deal. So go out, put on your purple, and put on your purple eye makeup like I do every day. And uh, get out there and root for those guys. Let's cheer yeah. for these Bobcats because they are, look, they're, they're underdogs. They've come back. These kids fight awesome. and play so hard, and they play with character. It's just fun to watch. Yes. It is fun to watch in a, in, in a time where it's easier for people to roll over and blame other people. The kids are just getting up, they're fighting, they're, they're, they're doing it with character. They're making a choice that we want to be better and represent this community well. And ETC will be there. Yes. So don't forget that. ETC brings you these games, and then you can they, watch it over and over and over as ETC whoops Lumpkin Friday night. And I want to, I want to give ETC a big kudos because because what they do the 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 way they film the games is just absolutely incredible there's family out of town that gets to watch that can't mm -hmm. make it so thank you to etc for what you do yep yep here we go okay we're going to leave you now with a little bit more local music i'll see you again next week everybody come on out to the apple festival and get to know this great town called lj <laughs> It's Friday night in the southern city lights. Wheels will turn and the rubber's gonna burn. The glass packs are racking, the power plays screaming loud. We'll cruise the red dot parking lot.